That's right. Back at it again. Full custom hot dog here. And we're doing another Blu-ray review. And we're going to be talking about the 1987 film Opera. Directed by the one and only Dario Argento. This has been considered by some to be the last great giallo this got a wonderful release from scorpion releasing you can pick it up through ronin flicks it's about 50 bucks so i blind bought this i took that dive for the main reason that okay so one you've got this film i hadn't seen it of course like like i haven't seen many of the ones i talk about but we've got three different cuts here which i already i already find very enticing because to me that means i'm getting the best version of the film because there's three cuts how can it not have the best version of the film but this also includes the U.S. Orion cut. And to me, the idea of, of Orion, you know, the distribution company, the, the film company, having a cut of an Argento film just sounds completely insane. So I, th that I mean, definitely kicked this up to a must-buy immediately ASAP. And I did. And I'm glad I did because this is a wonderful note in my collection. I am thankful to have this wonderfully packed incredibly packed three discs full of special features all across all three discs it's very incredible very surprising and this has pretty much anything you'll ever want to know about opera it's it's really insane so let's get into the details of the disc first and then we'll talk about opera which has surprised me and it's still surprising me and we'll, we'll talk about why so we've got a brand new 2K scan with over 45 hours of exclusive extensive color, color correction. This film looks and sounds great. Freaking very fantastic. It pops. Great job. Definitely uh, amazing, amazing quality here, Scorpion. You guys did great. Now, this is where it's going to get a little confusing because not only am I unfamiliar with the terminology, even though I heard them say it a ton of times, but I don't know how to read this. And I'm going to try to make this make sense. So... We've got the three different cuts of this film, or versions, I guess. Versions more than cuts. We've got a 235 to 1 Super 35 version. And then we've got a 178 to 1 version. And then the Orion cut. Now, I know you guys are probably going to correct me in the comments of how to say that properly. But, you know, naturally, I might say 2.35 in IT. and You know, we would say dot, at least when reading off IPs. Uh, in, in IMDB, they've got commas, so maybe I'd have to do like a pause, like a 2, 35 to 1, and that doesn't even make sense to me. So, uh, these are two different cuts. Well, again, more like versions. So, the, the first one, the 235 to 1, was shot in a Super 35 format. So, from what I understand, these films were shot normally in widescreen and then presented in widescreen with black bars over the on, on the top and bottom like a normal widescreen and then you've got the 178 to 1 which has those black bars removed and there's the rest of your picture now argento's preferred cut version whatever 235 to 1 that's what he would show when he would take this on tours whenever it would be shown that's the version he wanted that's the way he intended the film to be seen so that is the version that I go with is the Super 35, which is much easier to say than 2.35 to 1 and 185 to 1. Um, but yes, it all looks great, fantastic. Now, ton of interviews, camera inter on camera interviews with Dario Argento himself. You've got, uh, you've got, uh, I'm gonna butcher this, Urbano Barberini, and uh, Urbano played Inspector Alan Santini. You've got uh, William McNamara, who plays the love interest, who kind of had a pretty good career afterwards. I think there's even a point where he mentions a story with Crispin Glover, who I absolutely adore. Uh, interview with Coralina Cataldi Tassini, uh, who plays the, uh, the costume lady, Julia. I'm probably saying that wrong. I apologize ahead of all of this. And uh, Barbara Capisti, who I'm looking through the special features and I see an interview with Barbara Capisti, who I love because she's in Stage Fright, my favorite Italian horror film of all time. But I had no idea she was in this, and she's in this small part, the blink and you miss it part, mostly early on. I don't think she's anywhere else in the rest of the film, but they got an interview with her. You've got an uh, interview with the composer, 
Claudia Simonetti from Goblin fame, Franco Ferrini, a frequent collaborator. I think they've worked on a few things together. Um, special effects guy, Sergio Stivaletti, uh, press a even the press agent, Enrico Lucciarini, a movie historian, Fabrizio Spurio, and a makeup artist, Franco Casani. Man, I probably butchered that one too. So, very well packed with interviews. That covers everything I feel. That is so all encompassing. The freaking press agent. Who he who even thought of that? That's genius. He talks about his relationship with the film, how how he does his relationships with the film, that he kind of overwatches in a way, not as much as maybe a producer would, but you know, he's gotta be the he's the PR guy. He's gotta make sure that people see that everything's good here. And it, it's it's really interesting how all of these people describe their work on this film and it's very interesting uh tons of tons of interesting little tidbits you've also got audio commentaries with uh film historian nathaniel thompson jesus how did i butcher that one uh an audio commentary with film historian troy howarth okay and more according to the back there's there's a ton of stuff in here though very very fantastic even a music video behind the scenes production stuff this is a very incredible set this is if every movie that I have ever liked that I felt didn't get the love it deserved could get this kind of love, it would be a wonderful world we live in. For that, this gets a A++++ and maybe one of the best releases of this year, I think. This is a phenomenal release. Uh, freaking good, good to great job. The greatest job. And a wonderful, wonderful uh, slipcover and cover art that just looks phenomenal. But anyways, um, A++++, but let's talk about the movie opera, because this, this is a wacky one. Italian, Italian horror movies always trip me out, man. I always think I have this love-hate relationship with them. The moment they're over, the moment one of these things are over, I think like, wow, what the hell did I just watch? I don't know how I feel right now. But then I want to watch it again, and that second viewing is where the magic always happens. Every time, never fails. Things throw me off so often in here that uh, it, it's really incredible to me that it, it's much like my favorite bands in a way. A lot of the bands that I really like, I always hated at first. And then they just grow on me. And that's how I feel with a lot of these things I watch. Stage Fright, I think I had the same reaction where I was like, what was that? And then I just fell in love with it. Demons, ton, tons of this stuff. This one though is, um, one of the reviews I read somewhere had mentioned how the narrative may, may be kind of weak but it, as, as a series of the of, of nightmare scapes or dreamscapes, it works very well, and that's 100% true. But let's talk. Let, let's let's read what IMDb has to say. So, according to IMDb, this is about a young operetta is stalked by a deranged fan bent on killing the people associated with her to claim her for himself. That's partially true. It's leaving out some of the cooler details where you have this. Uh, so you have this young opera singer who is replacing one who was in a car accident. They're filming Macbeth, and she has the part of Lady Macbeth. Now, side note, Argento loves Macbeth and even got to do his own version, which I can't even imagine. If it's anything like this in the film, it must have been absolutely incredible. But um, this killer ends up stalking her, killing the people she loves. But besides that, the killer would put uh, needles under her eyes. So if she blinks, and I'm holding my eyes open like you could see me. Um, if she blinks, it hurts her eyes, so she has to keep them open to watch the terror, the, the terrible things this guy's doing. These kills are pretty good. Not a ton of them. You're not getting an incredibly high body count, but the couple kills that are that are in here are, are very brutal with some great, great makeup effects work. Really incredible stuff. Things that I was wondering how they did it, and they explained it, and it, it was so incredibly obvious. Things like prosthetic hands, things like that. Uh, very, very incredible. Um, but yeah, so, so the the killer makes her keep her eyes open on like clock, Clockwork Orange. Argento said he got the idea because he would get so frustrated with people covering their eyes during his during the scary parts of films. He wanted them to be forced open, and I'm still mushing my hands in my face like you could see me. But yeah, this movie does a lot of weird things. He, someone in, in uh, my Valentine review that I did recently commented like, oh... What do you think about how the girls didn't fight back here? They didn't do this. And I can normally give films a pass. Especially, I mean, horror films, you kind of have to give a pass. I always think um, I always think these victims are driven by fear, so they may not be thinking rationally. And that's what leads people to make incredibly dumb decisions, is just fear, fear in general. 
So, uh, yeah, it was cool. We, of course, had like a back and forth, very friendly, nothing, nothing toxic or weird. And he made some great points. And uh, this movie, if you pick those out in horror movies, this movie's going to drive you bonkers. Because the stuff uh, Betty, the, the lead in this film, does is just in- nonsensical. From running from her boyfriend's kill uh, murder scene and then just talking to people normally. You kind of don't know who's involved and to what extent in terms of uh, if, if, the, if, if these murders are being investigated because of the way everything's handled. And it, it kind of, the first viewing, it really threw me off. You get weird dream sequences, and then you've just got a lot of these nonsensical choices. But second viewing is... Uh, it was much better because maybe maybe I saw it was what was coming and that prepared me for some of the goofiness. But I definitely appreciated it much more on that second viewing. Uh, if you notice these screenshots, I, I took all these screenshots with this this player I've been using, Leowo, which is a really wonky player. It takes wonderful screenshots. This film shot very beautifully, so I hope I was able to capture some of that in in uh, in these shots. Uh, what I did leave out though is the last. 15 minutes or so of this film which go to a very unexpected place which was very off-putting because it felt like the movie should have ended and I think the the Orion people wanted to cut it before this last uh, 15 20 minutes or so I think it's 15 they wanted to cut it there which would have made sense and then you just get this extra bonus movie very odd choices and I, I didn't want to spoil that I didn't want to put any of that into the slideshow because I thought it was so neat and such a surprise that uh, I, I didn't want to diminish any of that because I think you should see this. I think if you're a fan of the genre, of any genre really, you should probably see this. At the very least, I think uh, if you don't like it because it feels too disjointed, too weird, I think there's a lot of really cool camera work here in play. I think Argento really uh, was pushing something. They filmed it in, a, in an opera house, you know, and they took out the middle chandelier and replaced it with this crazy camera rig that could do 360s, lower, you know, move fully articulated. And they would fil- they were filming outside with joysticks or controllers and uh, watching through a monitor how it was filming, which is really incredible. So much, so many cool camera movements that I didn't catch because I'm taking screen caps. And I've been really digging taking screen caps lately. If you want to see some of these, I've been posting them on Twitter, thinking about making a blog out of them. I don't know. We'll see. But um, definitely an interesting film, and I feel like I haven't said all the things that I'd like to say because I feel like there's so much. Somebody had mentioned that this had the record for the film with Mo, the, what was it, the film? Argento's record for a film with the most of his ex-girlfriends or something like that. Like, he dated like three of the women in this film. Um, So many wonderful effects in here too. Great, great set pieces, great costume pieces. I think this was his biggest budgeted film. I think it was considered his most successful as well and uh, really just a surprising surprising piece if you're a collector this is a fantastic addition to your collection I highly highly recommend it and uh, if not if you're if you're just into watching some weird horror some weird ass Italian horror look no further Uh, this is a pretty wacky one even by uh, what what I have I'm now familiar with uh, Italian standards so Definitely, definitely check this out. Uh, full custom hot dog. You can follow me on Twitter. Actually, it's uh, it's full custom hot dog with the last O because it is just too long for Twitter. And as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I feel I was a little disjointed here because there was so much to take in. There's a lot with this film, and there's a lot on this set as well. So uh, definitely let me know what you think. I'd actually love to hear feedback. I didn't. I was afraid I wouldn't like this because the initial feedback I heard was people really disliking this a lot a lot and then i heard some things that were good but i I think this is great i think it's it's a wonderful uh wonderful film so again thank you for watching and until next time